today on this Friday as we begin the weekend in our too lazy to pull up a green screen edition of a video we're talking about Mythic Plus and we're talking about some helpful things to have and to take care of when going into a new Mythic Plus key. Now, now we are doing this without having to go as high in key level or having to be super competitive because you know I realized that if I were to talk about that level, that high level of a Mythic Plus key I would be talking to about five specs in the game and the remaining 33 would not really have anything to do with it. So instead, let's talk about something that can be applied to pretty much the larger size of the player base, right? So what can be useful for you getting into Mythic Plus? Maybe these are things you don't have yet. Maybe these are things that can help you that you haven't used before. So let's start with in-game and let's start with something useful like Wikoras, right? I'm gonna, I'm gonna link you in the description some of the Wikoras I think are quite useful in Mythic Plus, starting from some Thing that is actually not useful in Mythic Plus, but my mouse cursor ended up on this, which is the combat timer. I think it's helpful to have an idea of how long you've been in combat with for certain, you know, for tracking certain timings and certain situations. This is, of course, much more relevant in the raid. So it's not nearly as important, but it's still, it's still cool to know how long you have been in combat with. We then move over to another thing, and this is not specifically for Mythic Plus, but this has been asked to me multiple times, which is the mouse cursor, right? This thing right here with the circle and the cross over the mouse cursor. You can find multiple versions of this, this mouse cursor by going to wago.io. You know, you can find the ultimate mouse cursor original version with a bunch of uh, circles for like your cast time, your global cooldown, etc., etc. That can also be used. You can modify the colors, etc., etc. That can also help you not have your mouse cursor get lost when you're pulling like 15 mobs, right? It's it's helpful in Mythic Plus more so than in the raid because the raid tends to be not nearly as as cluttered with shit unless you are fighting a boss and you're all stacked on top of each other that's also kind of bad now there is something that is quite useful for healers but this can still help basically any spec that have a way to heal others to dispel others to use some defensives on others which is the mythic plus healer focus assist now you see nothing here because you know this is tied to your party frames or your raid frames if you want to all this does is it's going to make the frame of a certain player glow it's going to glow based on the mechanics that each player is going to receive which is mostly going to be either red or orange because those are dangerous right for example being targeted by by gash frenzy or being targeted by the bone bolt dot on on yourself or if you go down to old man for example you have the very dangerous jagged bite for the dot, etc., etc., these can make the party frames glow, and it's very simple to get rid of it. All you have to do is choose the dungeon, choose the ones you don't want to see glowing in trigger, and just remove it. You know, if you don't care about visit bile, then just remove visit bile, and now your frames won't glow anymore with that mechanic. That's quite the helpful thing, as I said, particularly for healers, but it can still help. For, for anyone else with those mechanics. You have the Mythic Plus Auto Marker, which is mostly just useful for tanks or you know just to, to target particular dangerous mobs in Mythic Plus to better, to better signal that those are the dangerous ones that needs to be taken care of with more attention. Then you have something like spell CDs on nameplates. This is basically going to do this. You have your nameplate of the enemy and you will get the abilities of that enemy showing up here. It's very useful because it gives you an idea of when a dangerous ability is coming off cooldown and it's about to be cast again. So, you know, to get your interrupt ready, your stun ready, etc, etc. You can choose where to have the anchors show up, where you actually want the, the spells and, and abilities showing up on the nameplate of the enemies and this can give you a lot of a lot of knowledge on the danger of each of the mobs and even in some cases of the bosses. Lastly, for weak auras at least, you have the targeted spells. This is quite simple. It, it just puts a cast time with the icon of the ability showing up if it's targeting you. This is of course becoming more and more relevant the higher you go into key level. 
a random earth bolt that isn't interrupted in a plus 17 hits you for 70k so it's whatever but if you're being targeted by two earth bolts in a plus 24 you get killed you get double tapped immediately so you have to be aware if there are certain mechanics coming your way specifically for the double hits the ones that are being cast at the same time towards you those are usually the more deadly so this can help you realize what what is coming your way for example so as far as we Koras are concerned besides the you know the more the more normal ones like the suite for your character or things like the the aff affixes you know helping you with the affixes those are pretty standard these are the ones i would think could help you more in mythic plus in case you did not have them another thing that can help you in mythic plus this is about removing things rather than adding things is going on your boss mod whether it is big wigs or it is deadly boss mods going to the dungeon and not really going to the bosses because you know the bars on the bosses are quite small and few because bosses typically don't have many mechanics right so you don't have to keep track or worry about this becoming too convoluted we're not talking about the amount of mechanics of something like you know sarcabet right you don't have to worry about all of these things where you have to and you want to remove some of them because otherwise it becomes a little bit too cluttered in a dungeon what matters more isn't the boss clutter it's more so the trash getting you to remove or to add for example things like the expose the aoe damage of the containment apparatus to have you know emphasized the warning as well as the countdown a different sound to to warn you that that's coming because this is very dangerous same goes for the moralizing shout it's also quite bad to have it cast meanwhile something like for example magma crash something like whirling fury of the mini boss something like the breath of the dragon especially if you're not a melee player you shouldn't really care about this breath or worry about this breath right so this can help you also in the class focus more on the dangerous things in the key and ignore some of the less dangerous mechanics especially if you are a ranged dps wanting to ignore some more melee mechanics or a melee dps wanting to ignore more ranged mechanics or a tank wanting to ignore certain mechanics etc etc this can also help you make the run go smoother another add-on which has been gaining more relevance as we get into more and more messy and and uh, cluttered <laughs> Seasons of Mythic Plus is Plater. Plater is your nameplate add-on, which will help you with noticing things about enemies. Now, the UI is very convoluted. It looks very confusing, right? It looks very technical. A million options. Luckily, this is where, once more, Wago.io comes to help. Because even if you don't know anything about Plater, all you have to do is go to Plater nameplates, go to Plater profiles and literally just pick the Mythic Plus profile you like the most out of this. You know, you can pick someone with, for example, different colors depending on the danger of the enemies. All of these things are coming loaded with a whole bunch of scripts, a whole bunch of things. For example, this one shows you a different colored cast bar on the enemy based on whether or not your interrupt is ready. You don't even have to notice whether or not you have an interrupt. The bar will tell it for you. For example, that's a helpful thing to have in Mythic Plus. Same goes for the different types of colors you can have in here for the cast bars. You can have plenty of other different options depending on the danger of the interrupts of the enemies, for example. And you can find multiple different profiles and test them out. You know, go into a Mythic Plus key, test out all of the different things they have. You have a whole bunch of scripts you can enable by yourself if you want to, like if you're getting fixated or things like auras showing up on the bars. Modding is the same, will offer you a whole bunch of different options for mods, like warrior interrupt helper, if something is sappable for rogues, the Mythic Plus renamer, something like forcing different threat colors on the mobs which is more useful for for tanks the cast target on the spell name so you get to see who is being targeted by certain spells also by the cast bar of the enemy and then a plenty of other things you can still enable or disable depending on whether or not you like them so this is also quite helpful in mythic plus it's used by many many players and as i said doesn't require that much min maxing and customization because you can just find 
plenty of different profiles on, on Wago.io that you can just import in the add-on. Another thing that is also not that popular but can still be quite helpful for many players who haven't truly really used this before is the boss ability announcer pack. Lava spray soon. Mutation soon. which is this thing over here. What this does is very simply, it allows you to choose, depending on different you know, setups, like the type of voice or the volume of the voice, etc., etc., announcing certain abilities. Very simply, you choose whichever you want of the dungeons, for example, Halls of Infusion, you choose each and every, each and every boss, for example, and then you get to, for example, be aware with a voice announcement of something like Tempest Fury, the big AoE coming of the last boss. Or maybe if you're fighting the frog, you want to know wherever the overpowering croak is coming out. And if you keep it enabled, it's going to be announced and you can choose when, how many seconds before the actual ability is going to come out, the announcement will begin. That is also quite helpful for you to get more aware, to be, to be forcefully told by someone when one of these things is happening. Now, you do have some options on your boss mods, for example, to have certain abilities show up, like for example, the, the wild cleave, you can go and pick the sound you want, but you know, it's, it's a limited amount of, of set of sounds and also they don't actually call out the ability. You can just choose between a fixed amount of pre-chosen voice lines, which is not the same as getting the name of the actual ability in your ears when it's actually coming out in a few seconds. So that's also something that can help you in Mythic Class figure out certain mechanics coming out, waking you up and helping you with your focus in a key, noticing when things are, are happening. The last one I will leave you behind with is something that I've also been asked before, which is the Doom cooldown pulse, what you're about to see now. Mostly not because of the add-on itself, but mostly because of the question as to why did that icon look so sharp and cool and high quality? Well, the answer is you have to download the HQ, the high quality icon pack to put in your icon folder, in, in, in your game folder, to be able to have these show up at that quality. Doom cooldown pulse is the one that allows you to have your icons, icons you want, show up in the middle of your screen or wherever you want. Choose a bunch of different settings and then choose a blacklist or a whitelist of certain abilities you don't want, for example, showing up because maybe they have for example, too short of a cooldown, like you don't want to be constantly spammed by a certain ability, and you can just, you know, blacklist them and remove them from showing up. So these, I think, are some of the features I have, I have used the most or got out from the most based on the, the help they gave me, especially in Mythic Plus in this case. So I'm hoping that at least some of these, even to some of you Mythic Plus players who already thought had everything down on check, maybe you have found a couple of things to be useful in this video, that would be a win if someone found something more, something extra to use in their next Mythic Plus key. So for today, with this Mythic Plus help-centered video, we are saying goodbye to each other. So we are starting the goodbyes, of course, by thanking all of the Patreon supporters for the contribution and the help, the growth of the channel, help which can still be given completely for free by liking and commenting down below, as well as subscribing to the channel itself. With these things out of the way, thank you guys again for watching, see you guys tomorrow, and in the meantime, I don't know, it's supposedly less hot than previous days now, but mm, mm, making this video has been, mm, I'm not sure.